I'm making this video as we're underway from Puerto Rico to Bahamas and we expect a three-day sail. Darwin said, it's not always the strongest or the most intelligent who survive. It's those who are adaptable to change. And in this day and age, with the world in a panic, and we also have family and business concerns to think about, we've changed our plans. We're headed to Bahamas directly from Puerto Rico. When we purchased Biotrack, our original plan was to go through the Panama Canal to Galapagos, one of my favorite places, and then off to the South Pacific immediately. But as the summer approached and we took delivery of the boat, we changed our plans and decided that we would keep the boat on uh, the eastern seaboard for a year, traveling up to Boston so we could be closer to family and take care of business. Well, we were in Guadeloupe, Pierre and I took a trip home, leaving Tiller and a dog babysitter in Guadeloupe. And I stayed in Boston longer than Pierre and then went on to Toronto, Peterborough and Montreal. A couple days after returning, I fell very ill. And when we arrived in St. Martin, I went to a doctor. Now, I don't know if I had COVID-19 or just the flu, as the doctor said, because at that time, the Caribbean islands were not yet feeling very infected and probably there were no tests available. We traveled to St. Martin to have the boat hauled out to do bottom paint. Someone asked us why so soon, but we've done over 6,000 miles with this boat and we weren't really happy with the choice of paint in uh, France and we wanted one of the US brands that we were familiar with. So when I fell ill with a fever and pneumonia-like symptoms, we, had, we were really lucky to have friends from Palm 3 who gave us an apartment. So for the week, I stayed in the apartment in isolation while Pierre drove back and forth to the boatyard every day. Well, I wasn't in the boatyard to tape all the work that was done, which is unfortunate, but I can tell you there was a whole list of things that Pierre accomplished. So not only was the bottom clean, sanded, and painted by professionals in the boatyard, but Pierre worked on the propellers, removing them, sanding them, and installing two different products, which I'm going to tell you about in this video. A little experiment to see which product worked best. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the haul out, some of the lovely scenes near the apartment in St. Martin where we, where we stayed, and tell you a little bit about our future plans. stop to chat with our friends from Two Canoes. So which one is this? That's prop speed. And? So uh, as you know, we, we uh, Lisa probably mentioned, we are in St. Martin now, and uh, we had the boat hauled out to redo the bottom paint, which was, uh, I bleeded a little bit too fast uh, after 5,000 miles. 
the fact that we sometimes go to 25 knots probably didn't help. But anyway, so here we are on a hard, uh, just we did the bottom paint and changed the zinc anode and everything else on the props. At the same time, since no protection were put on the props at the factory, we uh, decided to, uh, to try. We had, have had several boats with prop speed on it with you know, fairly good results in the past. So we figured we'll do uh, one prop with uh, prop speed, which was done by the, uh, by the shipyard here. And then on this prop, since it's a perfect occasion to having two of everything, we decided to uh, try a new compound. And uh, <clears throat> it's a product from uh, Glidecoat, which is supposed to be an acrylic nano te nanotechnology type of acrylic that goes and binds into the metal and makes it really smooth. Um, as some of you know, uh, Lisa is a scientist, so she's always up to experiments. So. Uh, the only difficulty I had was uh, when we applied it, the temperature was very warm, about 30 degrees. So it tended to, to gel pretty quickly as I was putting it on. So it made, me, made it difficult to follow the manufacturer's instruction as to a thin, thin coat that he wanted to. And the coats ended up being a little bit thicker. I hope uh, <laughs> that doesn't cause too many problems. But so far I have to say that it, uh, it does look good. Uh, so that's the uh, prop speed. And that's the other one. <laughs> Just a little help. It's a little encouragement. <laughs> Just a little encouragement. Hey, From our anchorage, we could see the two masts of a beached boat, and we went to Kaiver to explore. The boat looked intact. It looked more like it had floated there after being abandoned rather than having hit the nearby reef.
Our current change of plans with news of coronavirus increasing throughout the world, including in the Caribbean, is to head towards Bahamas and just chill out in a very secluded anchorage. While we were in Puerto Rico, we went to a mall mart to stock up before we left and there was total panic with shelves empty, no cleaning products, just like in the mainland United States. Coronavirus has hit Puerto Rico because of cruise ship passengers who have brought it to the island and everybody is in the same panic as the rest of the world. Our boat is like a little isolated city. We make our own water. As long as we have diesel on board we make our own energy with a generator to recharge the batteries and we also have solar power. So why not just go and hunker down in a beautiful place? With nobody traveling right now, that seemed the best thing to do. So just the three of us, Pierre, me, and Tiller, we're off to the Bahamas so we can spend our time in the southern Bahamas and just really relax and for the first time since we've had Biotrek, just enjoy being by ourselves in an isolated place.